I suppose you'd say that um, Someday I'll Find You is a, is a combination um, of uh, a psychological thriller. It's got a lot of intrigue and suspense in it. It's also got what I hope people will find at the outset of the story, quite a touching love story uh, between Diana, who's my main character, an absolutely beautiful young girl who's a student at Girton at Cambridge in 1938, which is where the book opens. Um, and through her brother James, who's um, training to be a Spitfire pilot, because war's coming, it's only a year or so away, she meets the love of her life, who is another Spitfire pilot called James Blackwell. Now, we learn very early on uh, in the story what no one else knows, which is that James Blackwell, for all his extraordinary charm and humour and good looks, is a psychopath. He's a psychopathic Spitfire pilot. Um, I'm hoping he's the first psychopathic Spitfire pilot in fiction who's, who's ever been, been written. I don't think I've come across another one. He is interested, as all psychopaths are, in only himself, his own interests, and he is as ruthless as a, only a psychopath can be in attaining them. And he seduces Diana very quickly, and almost as soon as uh, the war has started, he marries her. Um, and on the very day of their wedding, um, he's called back to base um, in Essex and is called into action and is shot down over France and believed to be killed. And then the second part of the book opens in 1951 in the very glamorous south of France. And the contrast between life in Nice and Cannes in the early 50s to life back home in still rationed, freezing, rationed to the hilt uh, England couldn't have been greater. And my main character, Diana, goes there to live with her second husband because her first husband had been shot down. I, I loved it. I know the south of France quite well, and I love describing the oranges on the trees, the lemons on the fruit trees in the garden, the cicadas, and the fact that spring comes there in March and April, where back home it's the snow still on the ground. And Diana, this beautiful young girl, my main character, revels, revels in this lovely, warm, uh, luxurious existence. Uh, and I like the sense of period too. Picasso was still alive back then. She bumps into Picasso um, in a very fashionable restaurant just outside Nice. Um, so it's full of period detail and a sense of place. And I, I really enjoyed creating that contrast between um, a shattered England back home, early 1950s, still under the lash really, broken, rubble in the streets everywhere, the, the effects of the blitz still hadn't been cleared up, there was no money to do it. And there she is down in the south of France, not living it up but having a very, very glamorous existence until a terrible stroke of fate intercedes. Diana left a few coins on the table for her coffee and walked out onto the pavement. A taxi came slowly round the corner, past a little grove of lemon trees that lined the centre of the road. As it passed her, she saw the silhouette of a man sitting in the back. He was leaning forward and speaking in English to the driver. Diana swayed and gripped the back of her chair. Impossible. Only after Diana had turned the corner where the taxi had disappeared did she stop and lean heavily against the building. Her head really did begin to throb now, and quite suddenly she felt violently ill. She mustn't be sick here. She simply mustn't. I just wanted to write the story that came to me one day. I remember coming downstairs one Sunday morning, having been thinking about writing a novel, but having no idea of what the story should be. Um, but coming down one Sunday morning to start Sunday lunch going, and suddenly realising that a whole family had, had, had entered my head in the night. Really, it was very odd. Um, they were all there talking to each other. Um, and I realised, almost within an hour, what was going to happen to all of them, and how this would end, and where it, what period of time it would be set in, and where they all lived, and where they'd moved to. All of that, they're all there jumbling up. And then, when that happens to you, you have to write it. You have to get, you have to get them out of your head. Um, and what I tried to do was to keep the story uh, linear, you know, absolutely like an arrow, going forward all the time. I didn't try to pull off too many tricks, um, too many literary tricks or anything. I mean, I tried to write as well as I could, um, but I just wanted to tell a good dynamic story. I wanted people to finish each chapter thinking, my God, what happens next? Um, because that's what I like in a book. So I tried to write a book that I'd enjoy reading, you know, um, and uh, it's obviously for people to judge whether I've, I've pulled that off, but I've done my damn best to do it, to write a good read.